Hello everyone, and welcome to my temp tutorial on how to create full stack web applications. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing the usage of ng-show and ng-hide to conditionally show or hide eight different HTML elements based on an Angular expression. I'll also be showing the use of ng-click to conditionally execute an AngularJS expression based on if a user clicks a particular link. And I'm also going to be showing the usage of UI srep to show uh, the uh, UI router directive UI srep to show how to switch states when a user clicks a particular link. And finally, I'll be showing the usage of service and local storage to create a custom service that stores persistent information. So to create a custom service in AngularJS, I'm going to be using the factory recipe. So I have our account.js file open here, and I'm going to call the factory method on our module. So a service in AngularJS is in a lot of ways very similar to a spring singleton bean, and you can basically inject it anywhere in your application. There's a single instance in memory, and there's a number of different ways of creating services. So I'm using the uh, factory approach here. And so I'm going to call the factory method here. And I'm going to specify a name. And the name I'm going to specify is the name of the service. So this is the name you're going to use when you're injecting your service in your application. So I'm going to call this the account service. And it's going to just perform something very basic right now, just to illustrate that it works. And I'm going to create a function that will return a JSON object representing the service. So I'm going to create a, a JavaScript object here. I'm going to call it session. And I'm going to add to that object a, cut, a function that will print um, something to the, to the user. So I'm going to just alert that uh, foo was executed. And finally, I'm going to return that service. So this is an example of the factory recipe to create a service. So we're basically just creating a JavaScript object, setting a function, and returning it. So in order to actually um, inject this service, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the name of it in our login controller here. So I'm going to call account. I'm going to call it account service. So it's very important that this name here is the same as this name over here. So I'm going to uh, be able to execute the function that we just created on our current service. So I'm going to replace this code in our log login function, and I'm going to call account service dot log in. I mean dot uh, foo. And so if I do that, and I go to our application, and I go to the login page, and I click log in, you can see that it says foo executed. So our service is being injected correctly, and we're able to execute methods on it. So uh, what we'd like to do is actually um, use, so do something useful with this service. So um, I'm actually going to change the name of this. So I called it account service. I'm actually going to call it a session service because um, it would be more adequate to call uh, the, the, the service that interacts with the RESTful endpoint account service and call this session service since it's just going to manage the session. So I'm just going to call this session service and just make sure it still works. Okay, so um, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have this manage the, the state of is the user logged in or not, and our form will just automatically log in or log out the user each time. So it's not a, a secure at all, it's just to illustrate a, a session management in our application. So I'm just going to call, uh, create a method here, I'm going to call it login, and I'm going to specify some data and the parameter that we can save. And I'm going to use the JavaScript object local storage, which will allow us to store persistent data in the browser. So I'm going to call local storage .set item, and I'm going to call this session, the data that we're storing. I'm going to call it session, and I'm going to so this will effectively persist the data between page refreshes. So um, it's a very useful uh, function, and I'm going to call uh, also create a function here called um, log out. And all I'm going to do in this method is remove the item we set. And finally, I'm going to have a method for checking is the user logged in or is the user logged out. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a is logged in function. And I'm just going to check if the session data is null.
So that should check if the session data is uh, not uh, if the session data is not equal to null, then the user is not logged in. So um, this can all these functions can conditionally execute based on um, a uh, check uh, properly authenticating the user but for now we're just going to um, automatically log in the user and I'm going to uh, go down to our login function here I'm just going to log in the user I'm just going to call the login function here and over here I'm also going to inject the session service and I'm going to call the session service dot login function here now, uh, one more thing. I'm just going to add some basic logging here so we can see what's happening in our application. And I'm just going to alert the user that uh, somebody logged in with those credentials. So, user logged in with credentials plus data dot name plus and plus data dot password. Okay. So, now uh, we, we're storing information about the user when they log in and log out. And just to verify that that's working, I'm going to go to page here. I'm going to write Chris password. And if I click log in, uh, it says who executed. Now, um, the uh, I need to think I need to refresh the page here. So I'm just going to refresh it. So I'm going to go Chris password. And if I execute that, so uh, let's see. Oh, OK, so I'm not passing in data to this function. So I need to pass in the account data here. So if I do that now, we should be able to log in with the username. So let's see, Chris password. So you can see it says user logged in with credentials Chris and password. And if I go to our register form, I'm going to type Chris password, and I'm going to click register here and user logged in with credentials, Chris, and password. So both of these are working correctly. Now, one more thing uh, I'd like to show you guys is programmatically how to switch state in your application. So once the user is logged in, we'd like to actually redirect them to the home page. So I'm going to add, um, I'm going to inject the state, uh, the state service of UI router so that we can effectively, uh, so that we can programmatically switch the state if the user logs in. So I'm going to call state.go and I'm going to go to the home state. And I'm also going to do the same down here in our register controller. So we're just injecting a service that uh, was created in the UI router module for us. So we're just going to back to the home state here. So if I go back to here and I click register, it should take us uh, back to, if I refresh the page here, and I click Chris password. Click OK. Uh, it takes us back to home. And just to show that that's working with login here, I'm going to call write Chris password here. I click login. It takes us back to home. So that part's working correctly. So um, now I want to show you guys use of ng show and ng hide uh, to conditionally show different things on the page based on does the user logged in or not. So I'm going to go to our home.js file here. And I'm going to uh, create, uh, bind on our scope, uh, a function in our uh, home controller. Uh, I'm going to bind the account, uh, uh, the session service that we just created. So I'm going to inject our, se our, our session service in our home controller of the home.js file. But uh, before we do that, we need to add our account, our account uh, module as a dependency since we like to inject a service that our module created. So I'm going to add ngboilerplate.account. So that should add our account dependency over here. And down here, I'm going to add a bind a function on our scope object. And I'm going to bind the is logged in function. So I'm going to have this equal. I'm going to, well, first I'm going to inject our uh, service here. So I'm going to call it session. So it's going to be called session service. I'm going to have our scope object equal session service that is logged in. So what we're doing here is we're binding the is logged in function to the is logged in function only scope object so that we can execute this in an in an AngularJS expression. So I'm going to go to our home controller as template file now, and I'm going to show the use of ng show here and ng hide. So first I'm going to create a, lo a login uh, button here. Um, so I'm replacing the two buttons in the middle screen here. 
I'm just replaced with login and register. So just to show that that's uh, up there, it's working. So let me see, it's live reload. Okay, I'm gonna enable live reload here. Okay, so you can see login and register buttons are here now. And I'm also going to create a button group for showing a logout button. So now you can see um, we have uh, three different buttons on the screen, but we'd like to conditionally hide or show these based on the state of the user session. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call the isLoggedIn function in an ng-hide expression. So we want to hide the login and register button group if the user is logged in. So um, I'm going to call um, ng-hide, I'm going to use the ng-hide directive here. I'm going to execute the expression, AngularJS expression is logged in. So I'm executing with the brackets, I'm executing the is logged in function on the scope object. And for, for our logout button, I'm going to call ng show. And I, so this is a directive that will show this element if the user is logged in. So with those two expressions and directives, I should be able to see uh, this updated. So our, um, so we are, are logged in right now, so we can go ahead and log out and have it log out first, but we haven't really implemented that functionality yet. So I'm going to use the ng click function here to execute the lo uh, log out function that we're going to bind on our uh, on our home, home's uh, scope. So I'm going to click on home.js here and I'm going to bind the function log out. And uh, if I do this, so so basically what I'm doing is I'm binding the log out function on our set on our session service to the log out function on our on the scope uh, for the home controller. And if I go back to our home.tpl file and I use the ng click expression, I should be able to call this function. Uh, use, using an AngularJS expression, and we're going to call. Right, so we're going to call log out here. So with that, with those expressions, I should be able to log out now. I click log out, it logs me out. But it's also has an href attribute here. So um, I'm actually placing some wrong dev here. So I'm going to place. I, I have placed this on the button group. I should be placing this on the href element, on the a uh, anchor element. I'm also going to replace the href text here. So now that we've done that, I'm going to go back to our application now. So I'm going to log in. So I'm going to go to the login page here. And we're going to log in as Chris password. Okay, so now we're logged in. And I can click the log out button and we should log out. So that part's working. And now we like to use the UI SREF directive of UI router to conditionally take us to the login or registration page based on clicking these links. So you want to erase the href, uh, um, uh, you want to erase this uh, over here, this attribute on the tag, and also this one here. And I'm going to use the UI SREF directive, and I'm going to have this equal lo login. So each state has a unique, unique name, so we're specifying that we'd like to go to the login state when the user clicks the login button. And over here, I'm going to specify that we'd like to go to the register state. So if I save that and go back to our application here, um, if I click login now, um, so I'm going to refresh page here. Okay, so I'm going to refresh to the page. All right, enable live reload. Okay, so now if I click login here, it should take us to the login page. And so I can write Chris password takes us back to the home page. I can click log out and then I can click register and I can type Chris password. I can click register and it takes us back to the home page. So uh, this is a, um, a working example of session management using local storage and also an example of injecting a custom service uh, using the factory recipe. And also I sh I've showed uh, some basic usage of ng hide, ng show, and ng click. Uh, if you guys found this tutorial helpful, like, comment, and subscribe, and thank you for watching.